Hey guys, my name is Oranen, and we are back with our second video. I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much to all of you who liked, commented and subscribed. It genuinely means a lot and I only expected about 20 subscribers at best but you guys absolutely smashed it and we have passed 80 subscribers which is just insane. But getting back to the video, I wanted to discuss my process and style and how it has constantly changed over time and will continue to change over time as I try out different things and add new skills to my repertoire. So before I start any drawing, I try to find a good reference image online, generally from Google Images. I try to look for large images, ideally thousands of pixels large, so it retains its quality as I zoom into the image to pick out certain details. In the reference image, I generally look for something that has a good sense of depth and lighting. I personally prefer drawing portraits which have more shadows on their face, as it's generally easier to simplify their face into a number of different shapes and, as a result, get the proportions right. Okay, so once I've found an image that fits my criteria, I load it up into Procreate in the Reference Image tab and start drawing away. As you can see, I tend to start with a rough sketch and I try to keep my movements as fluid as possible. I don't want to be focusing too much on one particular spot at this stage, I just want to get the general shape and proportions right. As I mentioned earlier, I try to pick out the key shapes within the face to help me understand the placement of all her features. Once I finish blocking out the sketch, I turn the layer's opacity down, create a new layer and start honing in more closely on the details of the portrait. In terms of my style, it's something that I've been developing over a long time, as you can probably tell. Finding a style is probably one of the hardest things you'll ever do as an artist, you know? Just the thought of creating a piece and a random person being able to tell that that piece was done by none other than yourself is just astounding. I used to get really demotivated as an artist as I would find comfort in hiding behind the styles of other successful artists instead of taming my own and nurturing it to fit my approach to art and my personality. My introduction to digital art has added this element of fluidity and freedom to my sketching process. I think the fact that I can easily make a mistake and undo it has helped me loosen up my hand and just go with the flow. But then again, in art, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. <laughs> but when I was a lot younger, I used to draw loads of cartoon and manga characters. But over time, I kept on adding to that list, particularly once I went to secondary school. I think it was in year 8 when I was taught about the photorealism method. And for those of you that don't know what it is, it's essentially a system where you grid up the reference image and the piece of paper that you're drawing on, and you essentially regurgitate each square from the reference image onto your piece of paper and it helps you create a more accurate and detailed drawing. Once I found out that method, I was obsessed with it and started getting into more realistic drawing and that's essentially what got me into the world of portraiture. Now I find myself at a crossroads between the two. My current style um, certainly focuses more on realistic portraiture but I can't deny that it has a bunch of cartoony elements within it, which is more on show during the colouring stage. I'll soon get on to the colouring process, but for now, I'll let you guys watch in peace.
Hello again. Long time no see. As you can see, a bit of the video cut out, but essentially I just filled in the um, her face with a base colour I colour picked from the reference image. And then I look for a slightly darker colour and start to fill in the shadows. Um, this is generally quite a quick process. I try not to um, do it too accurately. I, I am quite fluid with my motions. And then once I'm happy with those shadows, I go even darker and find another colour and block out all the shadows um, to give it more depth um, and make it look more real. As you can probably tell, in this image the darkest areas were under the neck and in some areas around the eye, or both eyes and the nose. And here I go zoom in to fill in the eyes. I generally use the um, colour picker tool from the reference image and choose the correct colours. But when I go to a lighter colour, I just pick that out myself. I don't. I don't try, I try not to use too many colours, I try to keep it simple because if I use too many colours it starts to blend in too much and that's not the look that I'm going for. I want to keep it simple but have enough depth that you can tell where the light and shadow is and what the image is trying to convey. In a similar vein to using the original colours, I find a lighter highlight generally from the reference image and I fill in the highlights and then I go to the colour uh, the colour wheel and I pick a lighter colour and put highlights within the highlights to make it pop. <laughs> I generally struggle with lips and teeth especially but fortunately there are no teeth in this image but lips are quite hard to do um, you need to get the lines and the lighting of the lips um, correct but I think I'm improving and over time I'll get there. <laughs> okay so finally we are moving on to the hair. This was much more difficult than I anticipated because I'm really used to drawing straight hair and not braided hair, but we only improve when we meet challenges, so I was really looking forward to drawing this braided hair. Um, I found a colour um, from the reference image, so a deep black colour, um, or close to black at least, and I just filled in um, where her hair lay in the image. And then once I was satisfied with all of that, I found one of the highlights in her hair from the image and used that colour to block out um, highlights on a new layer. Once I was satisfied with um, the first layer of highlights um, for her braided hair, I would um, go to the colour wheel and pick out an even lighter colour and essentially do the same thing. but. I have to be careful with where I place these highlights to um, give off the right uh, depth of light and shadow. When it comes to the colour of her clothing, I think it's not too important as long as it adds to the image and you know, it just doesn't take away from it. And I'd never done this before, but I wrote down Annie's name on the sleeve and added highlights to it and I really loved the effect that it gave um, I don't know I just it, it felt really different to what I usually do so I was really proud when I thought I thought to do that eventually I decided on a blue hue for the background and that brings us to the end of this video thank you so much for staying guys um, please do like and subscribe and share and I will hopefully be back with another video real soon. <laughs>